Firstly, can I say how jealous I am of those of you who've been awarded fellowships. I think what a wonderful, wonderful opportunity it must be just to devote some really concentrated time to exploring an area of uh, obviously of interest to you or you wouldn't have applied, but also of such incredible potential value to the children of the future. And I've looked at the various things that you're all planning to do and I am just waiting with bated breath to read the results and see what we can learn from it. So uh, have fun and know that there's going to be an, an extremely eager audience waiting back here to find out what, uh, what you're discovering. And I'd also like to say Wave Trust is delighted to be partnering the Winston Churchill Memorial Trust in, uh, in this initiative because it's, it's wonderful that they offer this opportunity to people to go out and add to learning in a way that actually can and does influence government <coughs> policy and the future shape of how we set up our society to make it a, a more empathic, a more caring, a more successful society in the future, all of which I think you have the potential to contribute to. Now what I'd like you to do is I want you each to think of a baby. And then just listen to me. Our brains are made up of brain cells called neurons and synapses which are the connections between those brain cells. When a baby is born, it has 10 trillion synapses, connections, in its brain. By the time it is age three, it has 200 trillion. That's twice as many as anybody in this room. So just remember next time you look at a baby, he's twice as intelligent as we are. I've done the arithmetic over and again because I didn't initially believe it. Every second of a baby's life, it is adding much more than one million new connections in its brain. Just imagine that. Every second, based on what it experiences, what is going on around it, what it hears, what it thinks, what it feels, what it sees, it's adding one million, more than one million, new connections inside its brain. I don't know how many million that is since I started speaking, you know, 50 million or something already in a baby's brain. And that goes on for three whole years. During that period, the architecture of a child's brain is created in the same way as the foundation of a house. Now, it doesn't mean you can't change things after three years. You can change things in a person's life at any point in their life. But the foundations of a building basically determines what is possible inside that building and what is not possible. And in the same way, the foundation of a child in that first three years determines what is possible and what is, at the very least, highly improbable in that child's life. In that period, they either learn empathy. And empathy, we have found in our research in WAVE, is the single strongest antidote to violent behavior. Time and again, if you look at examples of terrorist offenses or psychopaths, terrible murders, terrible things, you'll see phrases used in the press or on television, the accused showed no emotion, the accused showed no remorse. These people show no emotion and no resource, remorse because they have no empathy for other human beings. And that empathy essentially comes from the interaction of parents and babies in their first, particularly in the first year of life. The quality of that interaction, what we call attunement, the ability of a parent to understand the signals and messages that a child is sending and to respond positively to those messages is one of the key things that not only determines empathy, but also determines, for example, whether a child is on a pathway to what is called secure attachment or some other form of attachment which signals potential relationship problems and a whole host of other things in life. So for example, 15% of children, and that's a lot of children every year, 15% of children develop something called disorganized attachment. And disorganized attachment, which can and, and most frequently is caused by maltreatment, but can be 
the result of other um, early life traumas or particular challenges that a child has had. Uh, disorganized attachment is on a pathway for children to relationship problems throughout their life, um, entry into care, poor mental health, poor physical health, high levels of aggression, very high levels of entry into child and adolescent mental health services, and entry into the criminal justice system. These are all extremely expensive outcomes. And it's not a surprise that the Children um, and Young People's Health and Outcomes Forum, uh, set up by the Department for Health and the Department for Education, estimated that money invested in the early years produces a return of 6 to 8 percent from investment. Now, I don't know if any of you are getting more than 6 to 8 percent from your bank, but if you are, could you please have a word with me afterwards, because I'm certainly not. That's a very, very good return. Government should be investing much, much more in the early years. And one of the things we in WAVE do is we work very hard to try and persuade government to put money into the right kind of things. But one of the things that helps us in that is evidence. And you can be part of that evidence with the findings that you come up with. In Scotland, and I'm glad to see we've got some Scottish representatives here. Um, oh, Christine's not here. Was she no, meant to be here? She's she? due. She's she is due. due. OK. Um, in Scotland, the Christie Commission was asked to look at the benefits of investing in prevention. They concluded that 40% of public spending is only necessary because we don't in invest early enough in preventing problems from happening. That's a, that's a stupendous amount of money. It's billions and billions, tens of billions of pounds a year we're spending in this country cleaning up messes that didn't need to be made in the first place because we didn't follow a strategy of prevention. So intervening with prevention, intervening to stop harm to children, intervening to get children off to the best possible start in life makes total sense from a common sense point of view. We all know a stitch in time saves nine and an ounce of prevention saves a pound of cure. We didn't need decades of research to tell us that. Our grandparents told us that. The economic case is there. The neurobiological case is there. Um, and we're gradually getting places with politicians. We're gradually persuading them to do not enough, not on a large enough scale, but we're gradually getting traction with them. So you can contribute to a really important shift. Our most recent piece of work has been a report called Building Great Britons, which Robin was one of the people who helped to, to write that. Um, and the Building Great Britons report, which was a, a sort of joint venture of the all-party parliamentary group on conception to age two, PIP UK and Wave Trust, recommends that government should treat the first 1,001 days of a child's life as important as the defense of the realm. No government would think of allowing this country to be at risk of being invaded by another country and not being able to defend itself. Yet the whole shape of our future society is created by that early foundation of the children yet to be born. And we are not giving that the priority that we should be giving it. It's part of WAVE's mission to make sure that that is what happens. And I am privileged to be working with all of you in this room to help bring that about. Thank you.